Anti-lateral flexion, a lateral plank. Those are the best thing, in my opinion, that you can do for your obliques, your love handles, and then like a farmer's carry. That's also one of the most functional things that you can do. What is going on, my good people? Welcome back to The Morning Takeaway, where today I kind of want to address a popular topic in the world of fitness that I'm in. And if you can see the board on the left, it says, how to get abs in 30 days. And I want to preface this whole conversation, and I'm going to try to keep it sweet and short and to the point, but knowing me, I love to talk. So I, I want to give you kind of my philosophy, run down a few things in my notes, and let you know that first and foremost, if you see anybody that says this, how to get abs in 30 days, they're probably trying to sell you something because getting abs and having abs is a long process, and there's a lot more that goes into it than doing a sit-up. So with that said, and I want to remind you if you take something away from this, if you hear something that inspires you, helps you, you learn something, please help me by sharing the show. If you have a takeaway, hence the morning takeaway, please share it with somebody. It helps me more than you know. That is the one way you can repay me. And I love you. So why not? All right. That was a little pushy. But anyways, so I want to run through kind of bear with me. I'm going to be on my notes a little bit. I want to preface this conversation first and run through a few things that I have written down because I don't want to miss anything because I don't want you to have any questions. You're probably going to have some questions, but I don't want to leave anything unsaid. So I'm going to start by saying this. Number one, 1% of the population has abs. Number two, if someone has abs, they probably eat well. They've been training for a long time and they have good genetics. And we're going to dive into all these things. Number three, having abs is not the end all be all. You should strive to feel good in your daily life. Number four, you can build a strong core without ever doing a sit up. Number five, stereotypical movements that people think are giving them abs versus what they are actually doing. And I want to give you an example on that one when it pertains to training. Number six, losing fat is no, not localized. Number seven, my philosophy on the core and how. I look at the core in my specific workouts and what I see to work the best. Number eight, it just says the brutal truth, and I'm, that's what I'm going to dive into, kind of the things that should go into you personally training your core. So personal training, personally training sounds kind of funny when uh, I'm not actually training someone. But anyway, so let's jump into this. Number one, where it says 1% of the population has abs. And I'm going to kind of group that together with having abs is not the end all be all. You should strive to feel good. So, and I can, I can group that in with having good genetics. So and number two, when it says it have, if someone has abs, they probably eat well, have been training for a long time and have good genetics. Let's group all three of those together. Now, 1%, get that, get in, get that in your brain. Think about how many people in your life actually have six pack or an eight pack or whatever that quote unquote summer body is that you want. And then think about their lifestyle. Think about their genetics. Think about their parents. What, where do they come from? They probably come from a background of, you know, athletics, active lifestyle, always working manual labor or their genetics are crazy. So with that said, the core, having abs is not the end all be all. And yes, it's very, very important to have a functional, strong core throughout your life. But we can do that in other ways without having to see the abs. And those, those that comes with time, right? If you're, if you're training for, I've been training for seven years now and I have an eight pack. Well, I also have pretty good genetics and I played sports my entire life. And there's a lot of things that kind of build up into the simple fact of having abs, right? But I say that because I also don't want you to compare yourself to those people that have the eight pack or that crazy model body, right? So, and it's easy for me to say, I understand that. And, you know, there's been times that I haven't really had abs, but I've worked a little harder and, but that's where genetics come into play. And I'm not saying that to degrade anybody, but that is just the truth. I mean, 
I am very lucky and grateful to have good genetics and so is 1% of the population. But that's not to say it's impossible. So let's mosey on. And when I say you should strive to feel good, that's, that's with anything in life, right? If you're feeling like crap during the day, go outside, get some sunlight. If you feel like you want to nap, go outside and just rejuvenate yourself, right? The more you move your body, the more you get your blood flowing, the more you're going to feel good. And I'm a huge proponent of that. If you follow me on Instagram, where I try to walk 10,000 steps a day and I post it every single day. And I, I do that to encourage movement. If there's somebody that hates to work out, well, you can still walk. And I don't say that in a, like, you should go walk manner, but it's the option is there, right? And I, I have a client that lost 60 pounds in six months by walking 10,000 steps a day and eating right, and she killed it, right? So I'm getting off topic, but let's get into the next uh, bullet point. You can build a strong core without ever doing a sit-up. So I'm going to kind of group all of these things in as we go as well, because I want to talk about the actual way that you should be training your core and what it kind of means. It might be a little over your head, but I'll give you, give you some examples. And if you want to, you can YouTube them. I have some great workouts on my app, nickwalkerfitness.app, um, that will help you learn these techniques. I actually have a free ebook as well. I'll put it in the description for you, but getting off topic again, you can build a strong core without ever doing a sit-up. So when I say that, I want to I want to go down, jump down to losing fat is not localized. We're just going to group everything together. So if I don't need to run through it one more time, stereotypical movements versus what they actually are doing for you, losing fat is not localized, my philosophy on the core, yada, yada, yada. So let's just get into it. I said I was going to keep it short, and here I am going on 7 million tangents. Anyways, so I want to... First off, tell you my philosophy on the core. And in my opinion, you can make any movement that you do in the gym a core movement. The simplest thing you can do, and the easiest way I can explain it, is squeeze your butt cheeks. Because the more you squeeze, and think about your bum, when you squeeze it, it causes your pelvis to anterior, to an anterior tilt. Pel pelvic anterior tilt. Wow, that was a mouthful. So it squeezes the bottom of your core and almost makes it engage that bottom of the core, right? So if you can think about it in a bench press, if you can think about it in a, a squat, anything, you can engage the core to build strength through your core. Um, when you, when you kind of dive into it a little deeper, I think, obviously, people say abs are made in the kitchen, and that is a thousand percent true. If you eat well, if you stay away from boxed foods, if you stay away from things in wrappers, those things tend to have ra um, they they tend to have preservatives and craziness to keep them in those packages, right? So they're not going to do anything really to help you. I mean, there's a little bit benefit to a micro microwavable broccoli, but at the same time, why not just go to the organic section, sprinkle a little salt and pepper and olive oil, and pop it in the oven for you know 20 minutes? So. With that said, yes, abs are made in the kitchen, and diet is a huge, huge, huge part of getting abs. When it comes to the movement side of working out your core and building a strong core without ever doing a sit-up, you can literally... So here, here's, my, here's my philosophy also on that. Besides, you can make any movement a core. The brutal truth is that nutrition is key, and you have to move often, and... I want you to take away some of these principles. When targeting your core, you should use anti-movements, dynamic movements, high-intensity training, and unilateral movements. My personal favorite is by incorporating unilateral movements. If you follow any of my programs, the Hybrid Athlete Program, the Hybrid Athlete Program 2.0, they really don't have any localized, crazy workouts that specify the core. It's a lot of working in unilateral movements, what can I do? A high plank row. That's my favorite ever exercise to isolate the core, right? I'm, I'm also getting some back work in there by keeping my hips square, squeezing my butt and really making sure that core is engaged on one side. So the other side is fighting it as well. So that's how that's going to help you develop it. When I say you never have to do a sit up. Well, if you think about and I hate to use just men as an example, but when, when guys go in there, curls for the girls, that freaking saying, whatever, what are they trying to do? They're trying to make their biceps bigger. So if you are 
extending your arm and ripping the muscle essentially and using heavier weight every time and then contracting, you're trying to make your bicep bigger. Well, if I go in and I see somebody doing a side bend, which is my biggest pet peeve in the gym, what are they doing? They're making, that, that's not going to make your core slimmer or give you abs. It's doing the same thing as a bicep curl, right? It's extending at the oblique and then contracting again. You're you're doing the same thing. You're, um, the contraction is still there in the core and it's not really, it, it's making you thicker. It's making you, it's building more muscle through there. And realistically, if you want to get rid of that love handle, there's other ways you can do that aside from just the movement aspect, right? That, as I have said. So with that said, I think, you know, these stereotypical movements like sit-ups and, you know, uh, Russian twist or these side bends, uh, or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, those are good in some places, but at the same time, they're probably doing you less good in the sense of building your core. You, I mean, it, it, they will help, don't get me wrong, but it's not going to be the most effective way, in my opinion, to get that core that you're looking for, but it will help you develop strength. So I want to talk about anti-movements well, before I move on to there. It's kind of the same idea that losing fat is not localized, which also plays into my saying of, or my philosophy on doing high intensity training and dynamic movements. So what's a dynamic movement? Any of your compound movements, like with the barbell and then high intensity, just increase your intensity of your workouts. And overall, you're going to get a better body flow. And this is, this is where it's really important in my opinion to do legs because Think about gravity. All of your hormones start in the ground because it's always pushing against you. So if you can wake up your legs at the beginning of a workout, get it going, get everything firing, and then work into these unilateral movements and increase the intensity, keep your rest times low, catch your breath and go, keep the good form, you're going to get a little bit more bang for your buck, in my opinion. So I, I'm going off on tangents again, but I can talk about this stuff all day. The... Losing fat is not localized thing is, you know, you can target specific areas, but realistically it goes back to that idea that you're just going to build that muscle more than you are lose anything, right? So it, it, it's a combination of having the right movements, doing the right things inside the gym, outside the gym, at home, whatever you might do, bands are great, and your nutrition protocol, right? So when it comes to, you know, these... Sorry, I just had a brain fart. When it comes to nutrition, that is going to just be as simple as eat real food, eat clean food, anything that comes from the earth. If, you're, if you eat meat, eat good proteins, lean proteins, red meats, get your fats in there. There's lots of micro and macronutrients that we could dive into for a later po podcast. But then when it comes to these training, my favorite, 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 favorite kind of moves are anti-movements for overall strength, functionality of the core. So you have anti-flexion, anti, or sorry, anti-lateral flexion, anti-extension, and anti-rotation. So anything that is anti-extension, think about a plank, think about dead bugs. I have all of those on my app with videos and, or you can just look them up on YouTube, whatever you want to do. Anti-lateral flexion, a lateral plank, those are the best thing, in my opinion, that you can do for your obliques, your love handles, and then like a farmer's carry. That's also one of the most functional things that you can do. Um, Anti-rotation is also great, excuse me. So anything, I also, just, just rotation in general, um, you, you can take a lateral plank, reach through, reach up. You're getting some T-spine mobility in there. You're getting a good contraction through the entire core, single-sided as well with the isometric contraction. Saying a lot of big words that probably don't make sense. One of my favorite, favorite, favorite things you can do is in a half kneeling position, which is on one knee, and that essentially squeeze your glute, and that essentially isolates one side of your core. Now take a cable or a band, and if you're watching me on YouTube, I'm doing it. Obviously, you're watching me on YouTube. I don't have this on Spotify yet. Take a cable from one side all the way down to your hip and squeeze. Let, the, let your eyes follow the hands and go with that kind of flow. I really love rotation when I suggest this to clients paired with some kind of 
dynamic movement, whether it's a lunge, a jump squat, a something to keep that intensity up and get your entire body working. Because as I said, it's not localized, right? And so I know this is all kind of really in your face and it feels a little brutal, but that is kind of the brutal truth of getting abs. I also have one more note on here, like Tabata training, which is also kind of high intensity training, basically going like a two to one split, like train for 20 seconds and then rest for 10 seconds into as many rounds as you partake in probably four to five rounds, 10 rounds. Sometimes it depends on how much of a burn you want to get, but I think that's great for losing fat and building your core and your abs. And again, I have a lot of good workouts on my app that I always suggest supplementing with other full body body weight workouts or strength training workouts in my app. So You know, that's kind of a lot at you in a little amount of time. And if you have any more questions or want to hear more on just specifically anti-movements or just specifically nutrition or whatever it might be, don't hesitate to comment. And I would be happy to dive into it. As I said, I could talk all day. It's already been 16 freaking minutes and I feel like it's been three. So with that said, I'm not going to end it just yet. I want to get into my random question generator, see what kind of crazy question we get today. What is the assumption that people make about you that's totally wrong? Wow. Um, Okay, so the first thing that comes to my mind is just the stature of a human being that I have, stature as a human being. I'm six foot four, 230 pounds, and was blessed to have very good genetics. And I feel like people see me from the outside and they're like, wow, that guy's really scary and super unapproachable and whatnot, but that's like, especially in a gym, I hate that. Like, I, yes, I get in my zone, but if you just come up and tap me, like I'm just a big teddy bear, I'll probably give you a big smile and super sweaty hug or whatever it might be. That's just kind of my nature. But I definitely think that there's an assumption around like these big macho guys and I don't really want to have that. So I don't know. I'm definitely, there's definitely a serious side to me. And obviously I love to get deep on here and talk mental health and whatnot, but I think that's probably the first assumption that people make about me. I don't, I don't even know if that's an assumption. Like maybe I'm scary, but I don't think so. You guys see my stuff on Instagram and TikTok, TikTok gets a little, uh, it's a little less serious, but, uh, that's, that's probably my best, best answer for that. These questions are fun. They're always something crazy random, but anyways, with that, I hope you're not scared of me. I hope you took something away. I hope you understand that, when you're trying it, it, the having abs is not the end all be all. There's 1% of the freaking population that probably has it. Think about those people's lifestyles. Think about, you know, what actually goes into these crazy physiques that some people get. And just know that comparing yourself to those people is, it's tough because they're, it's a different lifestyle. They, you know, the guy working behind the computer is different than the guy that's doing CrossFit for a living, right? So there's there's a lot of different things that go into it. But with that, I hope you take something away. Hope you have an awesome freaking day. Wow, I'm a poet. And don't forget to smile. Smile.